Roleplay Retcon does not own any part of the movies we retcon, nor are we associated in any way with the artists who make them. Also, while we're not the rowdiest bunch, we are adults goofing off, so sometimes we might say some things some people wouldn't want their kids to hear. The music in this series was created by Ben Prunty. Check him out on Bandcamp or wherever you listen to music. Humankind has reached out to the stars from its very beginning. From ancient philosophers and seafaring captains to modern-day asteroid farmers, the beings of Earth have strived to explore beyond our borders to places unknown. The drive of the human spirit seems to know no bounds, sometimes to impossible and dangerous ends. The year is 2720. It's been a few months since the people of Earth have been invited to join the massive space station known as Point Central, the city of a thousand planets. Constructed from thousands of ships and stations by hundreds of species, Point Central is its own sovereign nation where all the species of the universe trade, work, and live in harmony. The station houses dozens of environments ranging from aquatic to furnace, vacuum to pressurized air, all maintained and governed by the Confederation of the Universe. Each species is equally represented on the Council of Many, and though humanity has made itself known on the station for years, Earth now has its own representative, Julianne Mao. Mao has their hands full, balancing the ever-shifting political climates of the alien minds, as well as the failing Earth economy on the station. To help ease things, they have authorized a secret mission to acquire the rumored Mule Converter, a supposed mythical creature with the power to reproduce matter at will. The converter is being auctioned off by a black market dealer by the name of Egon Surus on the planet Kyrian. Mao has dispatched Earth's finest federal agents, Valerian and Laureline, to acquire the mule converter for Earth. Aboard the starship The Intruder, traveling in deep space en route to planet Kyrian, Valerian and Laureline find themselves having a nice little chat. Hmm. I never get tired of looking at the stars. Yep. <laughs> you Very you cannot character. dissociate this early. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're stars, all right. <laughs> what is wrong? What is on your mind? Uh, you know, maybe I'm just kind of nervous about the mission today. It's not, it's unusual for you. Usually you're so brash and daring. I mean, I am on the outside, but on the inside, maybe I'm a little nervous sometimes. Don't tell anyone, though. Well, I know this, but, uh, you will be our secret. Thank (laughs) you. Boom, boom, Oh, that's that's. Oh, there's the... a mom happening. <laughs> yeah, mom, that's probably mom. some sort of button we should press on the console, I suppose. The pair are interrupted by a transmission from Point Central. <laughs> ah, it's a it's a transmission from Point Central. I will bring it up with the communications button. Click. I say click when I click things. Excellent. It's just a thing I do. The screen ahead of you blazes to life. And the image of a very well-decorated military official comes before you. Is he wearing <laughs> his Wordle score on his chest? He is, actually. Okay. It looks like he got, uh, he had to take all six. Oh, so, but uh, that's actually very good in this case. Yeah, he's got a lot of different colored patches on there. Uh, I stand at attention and salute. Lauren just keeps chilling. Major Valerian, Sergeant Laureline, I am General Octo Bar, head of Earth Security and Military Operations on Point Central. As you know, you are headed to Planet Kyrian to acquire the fabled Mule Converter. It seems that this one might actually work, unlike the few we've seen in the past. 
Your mission is to infiltrate Big Market, where a black market auction is to be held. Big Market is a vast continent sprawling virtual shopping experience that exists in another dimension that overlaps the planet. We aren't sure where in Big Market the auction is being held, so you'll have to do some recon to find this location. Once there, authenticate the specimen so we know that it's the real thing. The Earth Council has authorized me to issue you one million credits to bid on the item, though that might not be enough. Is that a lot? It is for me. No? Okay. Sorry. Excuse me. Question. Uh, question from the audience? <laughs> what do we do if it's not enough? Well, that is why I'm sending my two best agents to acquire the converter. You must acquire it by any means necessary. Got it. Read you loud and clear, boss. Question. Another question from the peanut gallery. Yes, yes. What if it is less than a million? Do we get to keep the remainder? Uh, clearly any extra money should be used for your mission, if uh, need be. I'm sure we will find a good use for it. And uh, she winks at Valerian. The man running the auction is named Egon Cyrus. He's a Kodar Khan, and a particularly nasty one at that. He's the head of several underground syndicates and wanted in 12 systems, making him extremely dangerous. I can assure you his clientele is, ah, uh, for this particular item, won't be much cheerier. And now I would have asked you if you had any questions, but it seems you've already asked yeah, the questions absolutely. of me. Fresh out. Fresh out the questions. Valerian, any questions from you? No. Going once. We're good. Going <laughs> twice. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is orange. Hmm. Is that like orange? No. It mm. is not. It's, I, it's a new color <laughs> that they invented in the 25th century, <laughs> correct? That is correct. All right, all right. Now, I won't be able to issue your wide-use all-terrain protection suits or WAP suits. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You've done this. I did so do we, this. That's Alex's first personal touch to the story. <laughs> You are, of course, issued to use your Conceal and Carry S9C7RM Spectrum Advanced Issue Service Pistols. So it's a level 6 pistol. It does damage uh, 2d6. It's got a range of 90 feet. It has a critical 1d6 special, a capacity of 20 charges. And its bulk is L. Type is special? Here's the special. As a move action, you can switch this weapon's damage type between laser, quote-unquote fire, cold, shock, sonic, explosive, and non-lethal. These guns are also coated with a special spray that allows them to travel transdimensionally. Uh, it also has a restraint launcher, uh, which requires the target to exceed a reflex saving throw with the DC being your attack roll, if the attack hits. Additionally, if you have the quick draw feat, you can change the setting on the gun as a free action as opposed to a move action. It's a special gun I made up. Nice. Oh, that's fun. Well, if you have no more questions for me, I'll be signing off. Best of luck to both of you. I know you can do it. Thank you. And I salute the person. He returns your salute. She gives him, like, kind of like a very casual two-fingered salute. Nice. Which two fingers? I Not the, not the, not like bad ones. It's just, you know, index and middle, just sort of. All right. All right. And remember. I don't know, I don't know what would be the bad ones. <laughs> probably like index pinky. It just, it just felt like a trap when you said that. In some way. Yeah. <laughs> and remember. Any means necessary. We must have that converter. 
Any means necessary. We must have that. Making fun of my speech impediment. No, that's Lara Lee making fun of authority <laughs> figures. <laughs> who was that guy? What do you mean, who was that guy? Who was that guy? Well, that's the guy who's telling us what we're supposed to be doing, obviously. It seems like there's always a guy doing that. Yep, that's what it's like being in the military. You Is know? it the same guy every time? Am I just not mm -hmm. noticing? Wow. No, I don't know. Sometimes it's different guys. Sometimes it's not even guys. Oh, a, a, oh, di a different sounds. A, di a different button has <laughs> come up on the console. Up pipes your artificial intelligence, Alex. <laughs> hey, Alex. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Hello, Valerian and Laureline. I believe, to answer your question, Laureline, you have not had previous dealings with General Octobar. Can I call you Al? Sure. You can call me Betty if you want. <laughs> I don't get it. No, I will not. Okay. What? Why would we call you Betty? He's a, that doesn't sound at all like Laura Lee. It's a, a reference to Earth stuff. I'm from Earth. I don't get it. Mm. Perhaps you should engage with the culture sometimes, Valerian. Mm. That seems kind of rude, but okay. Maybe you're right. I'm kind of rude. That's sort of my thing sometimes. <laughs> okay. He's <laughs> part of my he's part of my picaresque charm. Got it. Maybe it'd be nice if we got to our mission. <laughs> <laughs> After a few hours of space travel, Valerian and Laureline arrive at Planet Kyrian. The planet is mostly a temperate desert, with a few spots of vegetation crowding near its sparse bodies of water. The big market spaceport is packed today, but the intruder's spectral override grants them clearance to land with little difficulty. The market itself isn't much to look at, just a large open area surrounded by a high wall with only one massive gate facing the spaceport. Through the gate, you can only see a few market officials, but there are thousands of shoppers, all milling about, gesturing and grasping at things that just aren't there. They're all wearing strange helmets and gloves that let them see and interact with the other dimension. Valerian and Laureline exit the intruder and approach their table at the front desk to receive their helmets and gloves. As they walk by, they see the matter transporter machines that will bring objects to our dimension from Big Market. As they move away from the table, they are confronted by a large man in an even larger turban. The turban is bigger than he is? It is. Wow. Welcome! Welcome! Everyone gather around! Gather around! Now, my name is Tazit, and I will be your guide today. Okay? Just me. Okay. I am the guide. Okay! Everyone, follow okay. me. Now, whose first time is it here at Big Market? It's my first time. Everyone raise your hands. Raising hands. I raise my Ra hand. Yeah, I them. raise my hand, like, really big, and it's, like, she's, like, waving it, like, wildly. She is not oh. being subtle. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Now, there are over one million stores here at Big Market, but you won't wow, be able... that's a lot. Yes, it is a lot, but you won't be able to see or shop at any of them without your helmet... And your gloves. So remember to keep them on at all times. What happens if we take them off? If you take them off, you will be whisked away from Big Market and you'll be in just a big desert. Oh. Well, will we be able to feel the desert? Like, like yeah. will our body feel the desert because our body's still here? Well, yeah, your, your bodies are still here in this dimension, so you'll still feel it on your skin, but... With your special gloves, you'll be able to feel into the other dimension. A big market! Well, Valerian, can't you just enjoy something for once? Well, I just have really sensitive skin. Well, I, I know. We, you, you brought your sunblock and... Oh, moment. yeah. Hold on. I just... I gotta, I gotta put my sunblock on. This, is, this is important. Good. Everyone put on your sunblock. Yes, good. Skin health is good. Okay. Do this. Do you, did you bring your sunblock? 
Yes, Do I you need have... to use mine. Okay. I have excellent skin, as you can see. Just fantastic the, the... skin. Yes, but it's still important to. Oh, know, absolutely. Well, th- this is it. how I have excellent skin. It's because I take care of it, yes. Right, right. Look, I am excited yes, about okay. Valerian. I am very excited about this, but find this 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 feels like finding a needle in uh, the haystack. Yes, we are going to search a million oh. shops and on an entire continent for a specific location <laughs> that we have no <laughs> need. I'm talking. But, to you. I mean, we're just here to have fun and shop, <laughs> right? We're doing honey? it. We're doing it aside. We're doing it aside. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, okay. If, 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 if the lovely couple over here is done uh, having an aside. Oh yes, maybe sorry, I could finish sorry. my spiel. We were applying yeah. sunblock. Sorry, go ahead. We're listening. We're, we're done now. Go we ahead. Listening. Thank you. Now remember, all items you wish to purchase must be brought back here to be put through our matter transmuter machines to be taken from the other dimension. Not until the end of my spiel. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> Valerian. I'm sorry. All items must be brought back here to be brought through the machines. To be brought back into our dimension. So remember, no thoughts of trying to throw anything over the boundary walls because that won't work. <laughs> now you may ask your question. What would happen if we tried to throw something over the boundary wall? <laughs> well, if okay. you tried to throw something over the boundary wall, that particular item would be tossed over a ravine in the other dimension. Hmm. And hmm. the shop owners would not be very happy with you. No, I suppose they they would not. That'd be kind of weird, though, right? It would be weird. Okay, but now I have a question. So, like, this matter transmogrifier, or Mm -hmm, whatever it is mm -hmm, that you said, mm -hmm. uh, like, how does it work? It works through ionization. What about Mm -hmm. for, like, living things like plants and animals and people and stuff? It works for everything. It doesn't hurt it? It doesn't hurt it. Well, I am not hurt wow. anything, Valerian. You know these. Yeah, I am, but like... I am so perfectly harmless just... at all times. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Well, then, that, but like... That is what is in our air like... fryers and in our, <laughs> and in our, our televators and all, all sorts of things that uh, are, are harmless to humans and, and uh, other creatures alike. Right. Mm-hmm. But the real question that I have is why don't we just like transmogrify ourselves into nope. the other dimension and then back? It does hurt us, doesn't it? Because that wouldn't be visually pleasing. It does seem like cheating, Valerian. I don't know what you people are talking about, but okay. I'm excited. This is, you're right. It's the experience or whatever. Wonderful. Now, if there are no more questions, <laughs> who's ready to enter Big Market? Yay! Yay! The ch- the crowd around you cheers. Yay! Uh, everyone here begins to activate their helmets, and you are visually swept away into a different world. Ooh. Massive buildings and store stands stretch out as far as the eye can see. Everything from street vendors to flying merchant junks can be spotted floating around. And now, I'm going to call for... Set dressing. We're going to go through all three of you. Okay. Uh, okay. Probably about two or three times a piece in order. And you're going to describe some different shops that you might see. Okay. And we're going to start with Jeanette, since Jeanette hasn't got to speak a lot so far. There's like a, it's a, it's a gift shop and it has like novelty items. Um, it's basically a Spencer gifts, but it's like in a different language. Um, nice. They have t-shirts <laughs> with offensive stuff on it and uh, like, I don't know, just all the stuff that you'd see there. Weird mood lamps and um, you, but your like... Your so glorified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Ben's made up word? No. That, was, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I get your makeup. You used it, ben. Oh, come on. You, you, gotta, you gotta let me make up words for, for set dressing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just okay. kidding. Oh, you were gonna make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. oh. Very good, Jeanette. Ben, why don't you take the reins next? Uh, there's also an um, X shirt uh, uh, stand for people with forearms. Um, all sorts of... Uh, like there's there's lots of like pop culture mashup stuff which Floraline doesn't care for. Mm-hmm. 
Just one pop culture per te for excerpt. Per excerpt, please, for Laura Lee. All right. Jensie? There is a stand um, that sells, like, really interesting-looking produce that I have never seen before. It, there's, like, lots of... I, I assume fruits and veggies. Some of them are kind of wiggly, though, and some of them are pretty interestingly colored, but some of them just look like, I don't know, regular earth vegetables like leeks. Oh, when nice. You, hmm. When you say wiggly, do you mean they're <laughs> yeah, some wiggly? Of them are just more wiggly. <laughs> Aren't they moving? Yeah, like, yes. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Okay. Actively moving. Actively, they're, yeah. there is motion. But they don't. Yeah, but they don't look like animals. They sure, sure, sure. They look like plants. They're just kind of wiggly plants, all on their own though. Not like not like you not like you reach over and jiggle them like like yeah like flan or something. <laughs> but they're just like they're just kind of moving a little bit, undulating, undulating as it were. Nice, Jeanette. Give me another one. Okay, I see a music shop, or it looks like a music shop, but a lot of the instruments are not from Earth. Uh, you see a couple, mm. like maybe a trumpet in there, but then there's like a saxophone for like a person with four mouths, um, or and nice. maybe maybe like thirty five fingers or something. Like it's a pretty pretty some pretty wild looking instruments in there. Uh, some guitars that are too small for for a person <laughs> and stuff like that. I like it. All right, Ben, give me another one. Uh, there is a fortune teller, um, uh, and it, there's nothing really all that special about it. It's a fortune teller. It does some sort of alien fortune telling kind of uh, thing that seems similar to tarot, but isn't tarot. The the picture uh, in front uh, shows an alien creature that normally only has one eye, so it's like extra eye. It just looks like a two eyed person. Hmm. <laughs> I like it. All right, Jensie, bring us home. All right, and there's, like, another little shop that has a lot of pottery. Um, there's, you know, bowls and cups and mugs and... Flarps. Larps. Larps. Like live-action role-playing or like an alien pottery? Like an alien pottery, okay, obviously. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, larps. Alien pottery. And lamps. Larps and lamps. But like genie lamps, you know. Now are lamps like LARPs? No. Oh, okay. Just They're cramps. like cramps. They're like cramps. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. LARPs are more like... Mm, they're more like flarps, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. All right. As you can see, there are just a plethora of different shops in this, this big market. <laughs> And, oh, uh, that's how they got the name. That's how they got the name. Um, so y'all are gonna have probably a, a heck of a time trying to to find this black market auction within here. That's what I was saying. So now you'll have to explore about and try to find clues and talk to people. Oh, talking to people. <laughs> that's the thing I'm good at. <laughs> Is it? Uh, no. I have, yes, I have never that known you joke. as a charismatic person, which I am not either. I'm, but, uh, I'm not. I like talking to what? people, but I'm not particularly... I don't know if I'd say I'm good at it just because I like doing it. Yeah. Uh, I don't suppose yeah. we can just go up and ask someone, can we? We, can, we cannot. It. Let's do that. Oh, we're going yeah, to... We okay. Can. We we should find someone shady looking, though, right? Not No, we don't Absolutely. want like a, a cop. Right, we, we do not no. want cops. But but it can't be too shady looking because it might be an undercover. Because because you know? he needs a cop. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're good at this. You're mm -hmm. good at like this. like medium like medium a shady. Medium looking. shady. Let's. Mr. Mr. Director, do, do sir. Do we see any medium shady looking people? Alec yeah. Well, you know what you're gonna have to do to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give me a perception check. <laughs> yeah, perception it's okay. check. It's okay. It's, okay. It's, it's just one. It's just one. I don't hate them. I don't hate them. I just think they're overused. What do we roll for this? Yeah, what do we? There's not. Is there perception in this? There should. There's no, there is. There is perception. Can, it's yeah. a yeah. But like, I don't know what dice to roll for this. A d twenty. Oh, oh, so it's a d twenty. Okay. 
Yeah, unless otherwise specified, you're going to be rolling a d20. Holy moly. I got an 18. And then I add, what do I add to it? You add your total? perception modifier, yeah. Under your skills. Holy shit, I have a 30. <laughs> well, that's not right. <laughs> no, it probably is. How is I that I have right? 18 plus 12 is 30. Oh. I thought you meant right? you had a 30 modifier, 30. which did not sound right. <laughs> yeah, no. No, 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 no. Yeah, Sorry, I got I got eighteen, well. which I thought was pretty good. <laughs> All right, well, with, I have thirty. With is a, a thirty, is this a big numbers game. It is okay. With a thirty, uh, Valerian, you see, kind of a twitchy looking Cassethus. It's mm-hmm. what you might describe as a uh, a classic alien. Um, mm-hmm. It's got classic. a big, it's got a big old forehead, uh, mm-hmm. a large, long pointy cranium. It's, it's, it's kind of gray. It's, it's wearing kind of a breather. Um, and he's, he's manning a, a kind of China shop. Mm. A China, Por- mm-hmm. por- China porcelain, shop. a porcelain goods, uh, stand mm-hmm. with, with an X at the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. It's called Xanthar's Z- Ziggle Plates. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when you looks- say ziggly, <laughs> 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 they're ziggling all they're on their ziggling own. All up and down. There's, okay. there's ziggling. Look, look, Valerian, the Ziggle Plates Platesman. Well, Valerian's the one that saw him. So yes, I am the one who saw. <laughs> him I will be quiet, Zim. <laughs> I'm still looking around. Hey, uh, Laureline. Did you forget my name for a moment? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually almost called you Valerian. It's, it's, it's <laughs> I was like, no, wait, like, that's my I, name. I mean, it is okay. I, I know you are you are preoccupied. Sorry. No, I didn't. I just, you know, I'm trying to... Are we... Do we have code names? We probably I mean, shouldn't no one knows. code names. We, it's we fine, whatever. Famous. Code names might be confusing to... The audience. James Bond uses his real name for some reason. I don't see why we can't. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. You need to engage with the culture. Okay, but anyway, uh, Laureline. Yes. We? I mean, we. There's a guy. There's a person. Hmm? There's a, I don't, is person, are we allowed to call aliens people? The aliens are people. Or is that say like I'm not a human, human but say I'm people. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, there's a person over there. And this person looks like the most medium, sketchy person I've ever seen. Oh, I think, the, Z- I think the they're Zico the Plateman? You are yeah, correct. Yeah, the Zico Plateman. I see. Yeah. That is the ring a ding, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's go talk to him. So you. let's go. Let's talk. Let's talk. I to don't him. know why my voice got all deep and smoky all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, approach. Yep. Trap. The... Trap. 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 Ziggle Plateman mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and a little a little electronic buzzer goes off over his door. Hello. Well, ha- howdy, y'all. Uh, welcome to uh, my Ziggle Plates. Ziggle Plates Zig- are... My Ziggle Plates. They're, they are Ziggle. They are big and plates. Ziggle. Let me... They're uh, got a, a special floral pattern. That's right, a platter. <laughs> it's like <laughs> a floral platter. It, it's a it's a floral platter from Saturn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, that's one of yeah. ours. You humans really like your own solar system. I, I've heard. So. Yes, he's the best one. Wow. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? What? You're ca- what? So smart. We got I'm big ones. We got small ones. We got the ring. The ring one, like this one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we got all mm-hmm. the kinds of planets out out there, all in one place. That's correct. Now, what what can I what can I settle you with? How, what kind of plates can I get you to go home with? You know, you know, I love these plates, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't know. We came all the way here, and we thought that maybe we were gonna, you know, maybe see some like some stuff that normal people don't get to see. You know, the ziggly. Like, we just got- you have some very ziggly plates in the back. The back, perhaps. You Ziggly know, plates. The, 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 the real far back, like very far back, the zigliest plates. Yeah, like like wink, wink, nudge, nudge, like maybe we have a lot of money and we want to buy stuff that normal people don't get to buy. 
All right. I'm going to have y'all <laughs> do a... Hmm, what should I call this? <laughs> <laughs> I almost wanted to... Let, let's, let's see if you can do a... A diplomacy check. No, you know what? Since you're kind of inferring, let, give me a sense motive. Yeah. See if you can infer okay. to this gentleman what you what you mean. Ah! I rolled a natural 20 plus <laughs> okay. 12 is 32. Is it isn't that 20 wow. in this a crit? Is it the same as D&D? I'm pretty much. Okay. My my I'm starting strong, which doesn't say good things for later, but <laughs> Maybe. I, I let me let me do this the math the pin, real quick. This is the pinball of TTRPGs, you know, where they just <laughs> give you a million points for doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, he just rolled a twenty nine, so you beat him just barely. Jeez. Ah, uh, but he goes, odd. See, y'all are of a a fine character. Is that is that right? Mm-hmm. I do. I do mm-hmm, say that mm-hmm. about myself often. He is. Well. Yeah. I hear tell. That they're having a special auction mm-hmm. down in the Vegas section with the exotic spices and fruits. I hear what happens there stays there. That's right. Now, the GM did not make that particular connection when he called it Vegas section, but that's very good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I am, I am, I am witty. It is a, a mock of my people. Now... I, I don't want to be telling tales out of school because <laughs> mm-hmm. I haven't been to school in a very long time. You don't seem, mm-hmm. yeah, you don't seem like the, the type. You seem like the hooky type. But rumor is that they might be selling one of them mule converters. Oh, what's but that? Yes, I you have never heard of this. Mm. Oh, clearly y'all have heard of a mule okay. converter. Well, we're not even going to roll for that. Okay, was that, was that bad at lying? Okay. <laughs> yes, we yeah. have. We have heard of that. You're right. I mean, everybody's heard of them. I mean, if they they don't work, though. I've never heard the, all the the mythos about uh, them. We they just don't. like we just like exotic pets. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. Well, if be good in our collection. They are uh, little chubby balls of grumpiness, so... <laughs> Maybe, maybe you will will like it. Cool. But, um, Thank you. Oh, c- can I interest you in any of these daggone plates, though? Uh, yes, please. All right, that'll be <laughs> uh fifty credits. Oh, yeah, okay. that's not, that's nothing. Pansy man. Okay, I I give him fifty credits. So, make sure you deduct that 50 credits from your 1 million credit uh, <laughs> got it. percentage there. Got it, got it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Who knows? It might, it might actually uh, come down to it. We'll, we'll just have Laureline pay the, the other 50 credits. Yeah. She's, Laure- she's loaded. Laureline didn't have any money. It's fine. We'll offer him a, we'll offer him a nice jiggly plate. What what does the plate look like that we bought? So the plate is a uh, white porcelain with little blue etchings of uh, flowers and planets, mostly just Saturn mm. though. Cute. This is like I like the style. He's actually quite nice. Yes, it's very cute. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Okay, but like, thanks also. Like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We'll see nudge, you later. Nudge, nudge. Uh, remember. Don't tell anybody that I sent you there, or that I know the dirty dealings that go down on this station. I'm not even sure we know your name, so that that'll work out pretty good. <laughs> That's good. Don't don't tell them my name's Sal. Ah! No. Uh, Damn it. Okay. Well, we won't. Sal. Son of a okay, gun. I've already forgotten right. it. Honestly. All right. Um, I haven't, Sal. Just make a left when you get out the doors. There, you'll just just head on down a spell. You'll find it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Oh, is there like a password or something? Do we like how do we get in? No, no, there's no, there's no password. Just people that can oh. find it can just just be in it, I suppose. Oh, all seems right. like well, a good cool. system. Okay. Yeah, the guy who yeah, thought of it right. didn't. They, they really think of a password or nothing. So. All right. Cool. Yeah, all right. Let's See just ya. bye. All right, let's turn left and head to the Vegas section. You make your way out of the shop, whose name I forget already, and make your way down to the Vegas section.
After a few minutes of poking around around the various fruit and vegetable stalls, uh, you find a dark alley. And down the end of that dark alley is a door being guarded by two guards. It can't be Zizophius, right? Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, I guess so. A large, a very large Vesk, which is a huge lizard man, shoulders his way past you and approaches the guards. They stop him, and then they begin to frisk him. And after a moment, they extract a very large gun from him. <laughs> extract? Uh, okay. They extract it. It was a, it was a it was a it was a butt gun. It was a butt gun. <laughs> oh um, no! And after they take the the weapon into their possession, they give him the thumbs up, and he goes to the door. Loreleen, they're gonna extract our guns. What do we do? Hmm. I don't suppose either, either, neither one of us are going to be able to talk our way out of this. We really should have a third person with us that is good at talking. That, that seems like sort of a high charisma person would be good for us to sort of add to our <laughs> dynamic. I think that would be good, but we can't do that right now. You know, I actually have a pretty good bluff. I could try and lie to him. You could also try to conceal them on your character. We should try to conceal them. We should try to hide them. They are not very big. Like stealth? Uh, but they just extracted that one from that guy's butt. Yeah, I'm going to try and hide mine anyway, but not at my butt. Maybe that's just where they check for them. They probably do check the butt first. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna hide it somewhere else. Give me a stealth. sleight of hand. Okay, I'm going to use my sleight of hand, actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Well, this time I rolled a 14, but I have a 15 sleight of hand, so 29. All right, 29. That, that might be pretty good. Uh, Laureline, are you going to try to conceal your no, pistol? No, I will just give it up. I don't care for the gun anyway. Okay. So if you are all prepared, you walk up to the two guards, and they're both code archons, which are just these kind of a a dark gray they've got kind of a slab nose no real ear protrusions they're basically humanoids they're they're really nothing to to write home about just like me okay just like you ben and they they hold up their hands um halt um what's the password uh Saul sent us I'm, I'm just joshing with you. There's no password. Uh, we, we are going to have to get the patch you down. Make sure you don't have any weapons on you, though. Oh, yeah, of course. All right. <clears> let me <throat> just, uh, pat, 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 pat. All right. And uh, what was your name? I didn't get I didn't get your pronoun, so I'm not going to make any assumptions. Oh, he, him. He, Hilarious. All right, uh, sir, you're you're good to go. Uh, Thank uh, you. You, um, um, at your name? I am Laureline, she, her. She, her, okay. Um, uh, ma'am, may I, uh, pat you down? You may pat me down, if that is okay. Okay, uh, pat, pat, pat. Oh, we got, we got a, we got a live one here. What's this? It's a, oh, that's a. Oh, that, that is my welding torch. I am a mechanic. Oh, that, that's, that's a nice, uh, welding torch there. Well, you can keep that. Let me just uh, keep patting, pat, pat, pat. Oh, oh, we got another thing. This one appears to be a pistol. Well, I was I was lying about the other thing. Okay. Oh well, <laughs> I don't appreciate that. Um, yeah. I thought you had a, a a torch on you. Either way, I'm gonna keep this pistol. Yes, you still keep okay. the pistol. Uh, y'all are free to. But like, we can come back for. Oh, it, of right? course. After the auction is complete, you may come okay. back and get your 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 uh, pistol. It'd be pretty wild if we cool. could not. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if that'd you be just like wild. took. Took gun donations at the door? That'd be pretty well, wild. Well, uh, that is some, <laughs> how some people run their uh, their extortion rackets. I guess with a million businesses, you're going to have some weird ones. I right? mean, they're bound to be. Either way, uh, mm-hmm. uh, through the door, yeah. if you please. Uh, the auction Take will on. start shortly. Uh, feel free to uh, talk amongst the other people. Uh, form lasting friendships. Uh, whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, okay. Bye. All right. Nice.
Bye. And you are free to go through the door. All right, let's go through that door. What's behind the door? Pretty welcoming and polite for a black market. Well, you know, some, some they want to keep their cl- clientele happy, so they'll spend lots of money, right? Welcome to the break. To the break. Boy, Woo, I, I hope you. I hope they're enjoying this first episode of Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. I know I'm not. Aww. Because now Aww. you... This is, uh, this is Alex's, like, first time editing. He edited this uh, episode, and, like, it's not... <laughs> it's not great. Now, now you have to do some of the not fun parts. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. Aww. I hate it. I hate it so much. He's good at it, though. <laughs> I, I'm not, and I could be playing Elden Ring instead. But <laughs> here I am, slaving for you, dear listener. Slaving. I know Ben's doing the sound design for these episodes. So I am still doing the I sound hope, design. I hope you're enjoying that. I want to talk about someone much more important, though. I want to talk about our guest star for the series, who is my best friend, Jeanette Blasius. Hey, it me. My relationship with Jeanette is much more important than anyone else's relationship with her. <laughs> Like, like, wow. just value wise, I can't Make imagine her being closer to anyone else here. <laughs> anyone else here? No <laughs> one is going to get this joke. <laughs> I mean, probably not. That doesn't every, know us. Every t- every time we introduce Jeanette, we do say pretty definitively that she is my wife. Okay, Jeanette. Also, um, Jeanette designed our logo, and we don't say that enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm um, kind for... of the roleplay retcon roadie. That's what I've always said. A well, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now you're on stage. Congratulations. Yay. She did our, my she did time our to logos. Shine. She she made some t-shirts that you can find on the several t-shirt places. So you can find me on Linktree at linktree slash Jeanette Blasius, one word. Or you can find me on Instagram at ink.spitter, where you can find all my weird art and cosplays. And then I also have a link to the t-shirts there. So it might be easier to find me there. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um if you if you miss that, we will put that uh link tree in the show notes. The show mm-hmm. the, like the episode description. That's right. Or you can just like talk to us on our Discord and we'll probably you know show you where it is from there. Cuz we're pretty busy in our Discord talking and chatting and doing right our time. doing our daily wordles. I want to appreciate and thank Ben Prunty uh for letting us use his music from his album chromatic t-rex uh you definitely should have heard some of the tunes so far and man i love Bryn printy and his cool cool beeps and boops he makes with this music they're so the, cool lots of lots of good video game soundtracks ftl celeste so we yeah we said so we have discord uh, we've also got patreon we got patreon uh there are links to that in the show notes we have lots of fun stuff there I say show Find notes. Do people know what I mean when I say show notes? I never do, but it's I the assume episode does. description of this, uh, like yeah. in your thing that you are consuming this podcast in. Um, there's links to uh, Discord and Patreon. Uh, our Patreon has lots of fun stuff. We do something every month called uh, a rando, uh, where it's just a special recording we do just for you, uh, the, uh, the patrons. Um, they are not. Um, they they so far have not really been roleplay retcon related much at all. Uh, no. It's been just lots of different things. Like we did an improv session once. We got one coming up where Kyle, our guest from Pixels, and Alex and I just kind of shoot the shit for a minute about. I'm in several randos. I like the one we did. One where it was a uh, try not to laugh. Yeah. Was, oh yeah, you were a ref for try not to laugh. Yeah. We need to do another one of those. We need to do oh, another yeah, one that of those. was fun. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I would very much like to dedicate this episode to our patron, Mike Myler. Mike. Mike. Mike, 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 Mike. Mike, we really love Mike Myler. Um, he has been so great since, when did he join us? Well, he did the, he wrote uh, What's Old is 
now. Now, mm-hmm. the like supplement Boing. to what's old is new mm-hmm. uh, that we use for Super mm-hmm. Mario Brothers. So, um, Super Mario Brothers, that's the one. Super yeah, Mario that is Brothers. the one. And he's been just a wonderful patron since then. Mm-hmm. Um, please review us somewhere. Yeah. Review us somewhere. Leave us a, a nice little note about how pretty you think our hair is. Um, because I I do a lot of work uh, maintaining this mane that I've mm-hmm. got. I use mm-hmm. a lot of the head and shoulders. I, I get the apple scent. Oh. And if fancy. someone could just write a review of that for Roleplay Redcon, I'd appreciate it. Maybe five stars? Yeah. I yeah. think your hair deserves five stars. Thank you. For serious, though, Facebook, iTunes, your podcatcher, anywhere. We need this more than anything. If you had to choose between giving a dollar on Patreon and writing a review, you should write the review. It's that important. This episode and the whole podcast, really, is produced by Two Fish in a Jug, which is us, by the way, (laughs) if you didn't know. (laughs) Um, And it was recorded in Saga, Japan, and some other boring places. You just want it, you just really like to capitalize on the fact that I'm over here. I don't in Japan. think we've done it enough, honestly. <laughs> now we're going to let y'all get back to the episode. We hope you enjoy it. And from Two Fish in a Jug, bye kisses. enter into a large dark room where there's a multitude of people from several alien races standing in small groups discussing today's auction you see four yasoki which are small rat people two rather large vesk which are the large lizard people three skelemen which are rather thin emaciated humanoids that almost look like human skeletons one small speed ray, which is an arachnid type of race, and even an android. You two are the only humans present in the room. You also see two more Kodor Khans standing guard at a back door inside the room. Ah, there it is. That, I think, is a target. Okay. Let's go. Are you making fun of my accent? Yes, I was. <laughs> what is with you today? I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just having an off day. Maybe I just like making fun of your accent. I don't know. I'm not very charismatic, you know. Well, I like you just the way you are. She boops you on the nose. One of the four Yasoki turns to you. Hey, are you excited for the auction? Oh my gosh, so excited. Are you oh, excited? Uh, let me tell you, my three brothers and me, we're all super excited. We're we're hoping to get s- some really good things today. You are very forthcoming with information for someone at a black market. Auction. I don't know what information I've given you apart from that I have three brothers, but you can clearly see them over there. They look just like me. <laughs> they do look a lot like you, yes. I see the resemblance. What's that supposed to be? You some kind of racist? What? No, you just said that you. Look yeah, alike. I can I'm say that. You can't you. say that. I'm saying that, that you are siblings that look wow. alike. Wow. Yeah, Laureline, stop being a racist. Stop being a racist. So sorry. Thank you. You know how humans are. Silly humans. I'm. Am I yeah. right? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's this kind of racist. <laughs> Laureline. So, you looking to get anything special out of the auction today? Yeah. What about you? Oh, a few things. I need a new drive for my, uh, my, my flip fighter. But what, oh, yeah. what are the chances that's going to be on the docket today? Am I right? Well, one can only hope, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good talking so, to anyway, you. So, anyway, I guess, um, I'll talk to you later. Where the, um... Hey, do you know what is behind the uh, the scary door back there? Well, I expect that's where they're keeping all the uh, 
all the good stuff, if you know what I mean. I wouldn't be surprised if Igon himself's back there getting all primmed up for the show. Talk to you later, little man. Who you call little? Thank you for Stop being racist, Laureline. I'm so sorry. You know how humans are. Let's yeah. let's move away. I'm, I'm gonna go get a drink. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. You can't. You can't just call people little. He was short. It's he co- was a little short. It's man. condescending. I feel like you are the one that is attaching, attaching a, a, a value judgment to height. Well, I was not doing that. So I'm, I'm, okay. <laughs> Oh, 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 did uh, did Arlene make a good point? Oh, I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. There's got to be a way we can sneak into this back room without going the direct route. You know what you can do to do that? What? You can give me a perception check. Okay, perception check. <laughs> well, I'll need you to do that because I have rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I am, I'm a high roller today. Uh, I rolled a, a 16, and uh, I don't remember what I'm... 12 plus 12 is something. It's 28. 28. <laughs> Math prevails again. <laughs> Thank God Alex is here. <laughs> With a 28, you see at the very center of the room, about 15 feet up on the ceiling, is a... What what you might imagine is a ventilation grate. Uh-huh. Uh, you think it might go into that direction of the other room, but it might be a little difficult to get to. Because it's in the ceiling? Mm-hmm. In the middle of the room. Right. Well. But as you ponder that, a large gong sounds throughout the room. And in walks a huge alien, flanked by the two guards that were at the door. Mm -hmm. He is a massive Kodar Khan, with dozens of gold rings attached to his earlobes. He's wearing a vibrant red shirt and pale purple pants. Well, this guy fucks. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's auction. I am the illustrious Igon Cyrus, and I have many lovely things to sell you. And without further ado, the first item up to bid is the Quantorum Exfoliating Laser! And the crowd begins to murmur as the bidding begins. Exfoliating? Laurelie, keep your eye on the prize. Is this for skincare? I am going to, so I can go through each one of these items, Mm -hmm. and you may bid on any of them that you wish, or you can make uh, certain checks to try to drive the price up on some of these items before your item gets up to bid. Mm. Mm. Auction mechanics. Auction mechanics. It's going to be so much fun. Fantastic. Exfoliating laser. Okay, well, first of all, I want to know if I have any idea what an exfoliating laser is. Give me an engineering check. Well, I'm not so bad at that. Let's scroll up a dep a dep a do. Engineering. Well, I rolled a three on the die, but I have a 13, so that's 16, which may not be enough. In this. With a 16, you expect a Quantorum exfoliating laser might be something to shave off interdimensional ticks. Yeah, that's that's all you get out of that. That doesn't seem right, but I'm not sure. I don't remember. Uh, I don't want it. I don't want it. What what kind of checks would we need to do to like try and drive up the prices cuz it sounds kind of risky cuz what if we accidentally have to get something? What's the starting bid? Uh the starting bid seems to be 200 credits. Okay, so we have a lot of upward mobility here. You can make a diplomacy check during each one of these things to try to drive up the price. If you succeed by enough of a margin, you'll drive up the price without bidding. But if you fail, 
you might accidentally bid on this item and win. If we fail, we win the auction. It's such a strange. <laughs> well, you're trying to. No, but we not... don't want it. Yeah, you don't want you don't want this item. Okay, so so what do I do? I just want to bid. I just want to say like two hundred. That that is not nearly enough for this. I, I will bid a thousand credits. Oh shit! A thousand credits. Do we have any others? Well, let's 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 hear a uh, diplomacy check from you, Laureline. 16 plus 1 is 17. You only have a plus 1? Oh That's co- that is correct. <laughs> I will bet 1,500 credits. Well, that's my move. That's yours. I don't want it. Well, we, we need to make them run out of money so that we can get, you know, the parcel... Uh fine. If my lovely wife wants this tick remover thing for her ticks or whatever, I guess <laughs> I'll bid eleven hundred. I mean sixteen hundred. When you when you say wife, she kind of like cocks an eyebrow and gives you a sort of a wry look, like oh, your wife, eh? <laughs> All right, Valerian, give me a uh, give me a diplomacy roll. Uh, twenty four. Well, I have to have it for myself, so I will bid 2,000 credits. 2,000 credits, wow. That's that's a good that's a good amount of money. Yes, a little reach for my blood. Yeah. Sorry, honey, you're just going to have to deal with the ticks. I can't afford it. Hmm, <laughs> those damn ticks. 2,000 credits going once. 2,000 credits going twice. Sold to the large vesk in the back. I know you'll get a lot of use out of that quantum exfoliating laser. The next item that comes up to bid is a Havoc Drive for a a Drengar Flip Fighter. Oh. The little rat man needed this. We should just let him have it. We should just let him have it. This is for you, buddy. And the Yusoki begins bidding on it. He bids up to 15 thousand credits for it and he wins it hey good job oh, pal. Oh, phew. good good job big big guy is that better no just don't comment on people's size it's not he's better it's not, it's not, not better polite. no I, I think i see what you mean i see what you mean yes the next item up for bid is a long lost painting of zevaroth the impatient an intergalactic uh, emperor from the third dynasty of the we Civilization. Who is it by? Who is it by? Who is it by? Tell me. Tell me, auctioneer. It is by the illustrious Calthor. And, uh, like, <laughs> Laureline, like, slaps a hand onto Valerian, like, a little too hard. And she is like, I know we are on a mission. I know. But I must have this painting. No. What? It will look, it will look amazing in the intruder. <laughs> the opening bid will be. 27,000 credits. Lord have mercy. 27,000 credits right here. Uh, Laureline. All right. I must have the painting. We have a million credits. Laureline, go ahead and give it me a diplomacy fun. check. Diplomacy check. Only plus one. Six plus one is seven. Ah! <laughs> no one else bids on this item. Laureline. <laughs> keep your dirty hands in your pockets. Laureline. No one, no one here will appreciate it like I will. <laughs> Twenty-seven thousand going once. Twenty-seven thousand going twice. Sold to the human in the back, the one with the long hair. Yes, thank you. Thank you for noticing, Alex. I have a point of order. I forgot to inquire. Okay, about. yeah. Do I have my drone with me yet? Uh, it appears you left it on the intruder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it would make sense, yeah. right? It, it would be a little. It uh, would have been hard to get into the uh, the dimension here. It's one one too many pieces mm-hmm, of kit. Mm-hmm, so yeah, mm-hmm. I will just have to sort of hold this hold this the best I can. Oh yeah. Well, they don't give it to you till the end. Yeah, not to the how end. That's auctions work. Oh. oh, but what if we have to make it? That's how auctions work. I don't have any control over this. 
<laughs> I may not get my painting. Well, right. we'll get your painting, honey. Oh, I did not think of this. The next item for bid is a pair of long thought extinct geese from the planet Earth. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, <laughs> this is the one I should have bought. Oh, well. <laughs> Honk. Honk. Look at them. They are beautiful. They're Geese are the worst. Look at them. They, they sing their song of love. I don't want to hear that nonsense. Do either of you plan on bidding on these geese? No. No, no. I've already got my thing. The auction passes and they are sold to one of the skeleton in the corner. And he looks at them, rubbing his hands and licking his thin lips. So you know, I mean, they are tasty. I'm not. He's going to eat them. Not. I see. Yes, pate. I mean, I like pate. I am. I am from France. I like pate. The last one before your your option comes up is an illegal ZF1 assault machine by Zorg Industries. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's. <laughs> I just had to put it in there. <laughs> wait, wait, so it's an assault machine, period? It's not. Well, it's not really a machine gun. It's not really a rocket launcher. Okay. It's not an air launcher. It's all of these things. Yeah. Oh, oh, Zornik, I hear he's... He's a real bad dude. I love his hair so much. Yeah, I hear he has pretty great hair. I think it depends on who you're talking to. Yeah, I guess so. And the bid go by goes by, and the android wins that bid for a non, for a big, for for a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Uh, a lot of money. It's so much money. Ooh. What do you think he wants to do with that? Probably shoot folks with it. Yeah. Probably murder Eisen. All right. And after all these items are shown, Egon claps his hands together. Now, all my fine felons, this brings us to our final item for today. I know you've all heard the rumors, and yes, they are true. We have a mule converter. A hush falls over the crowd. I know what you're thinking. Mule converters don't actually work. That their fabled powers are just that. Fables. But I... Egon Cirrus have discovered their secret. Behold! And he gestures behind him as two guards wheel a large hovering platform out onto the stage. On it appears to be a large box covered in a cloth. As the platform comes to a stop next to Egon, he reaches up and rips away the drape, revealing a large cage. Inside the cage is a young human woman. Uh, sitting cross-legged next to a smaller cage containing a small, grumpy-looking creature, the Mule Converter. Jeanette, introduce what your character looks like. My character looks kind of like a young pop singer. Uh, She looks human, and um, she, uh, as soon as you pull the drape away, she kind of gasps at the crowd, and she goes, Hey, y'all! Y'all came to come by me? (laughs) I feel like I should sing a song. None of that. None of that. As you can see, our converter has itself a little friend. She calls herself Bubble, if you care to know. And she is the only person that can get the mule converter to work. Allow me to demonstrate. He digs into his pockets and produces a small gold coin. Here, girl. Have your friend perform for the crowd. And he flicks the coin to you. Oh, shiny. So she takes a coin and she kind of looks at... uh, It's called the Mule Converter, but uh, the puppy's name, as she calls it, uh, is Dolly. Dolly. Aww. (laughs) Now you've got a... Here, Dolly. (laughs) Do your thing. (laughs) Hello, Dolly. Bubble reaches into the small cave and puts the Mule Converter, Dolly into her hand, and feeds it the coin. After a rumbling start, the computer begins to produce hundreds of coins spilling out all across the cage. And Egon burst out laughing. Imagine it! 
Your very own mule converter, producing a near endless supply of materials and resources. Of course, this will be a hot little item to hold on to. So we'll start the building low. Let's say... 200,000 credits. Valerian, did you, Valerian, did you see? It works. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Can I use these? Can I get to, do I get to keep these coins? No. no. And he hits a button and the magnet sweeps all the coins away. Darn. Why would he not want to keep it? Why would he sell it? Is that a question from the audience I heard about whether I should keep this thing or not? Uh, no, I, I don't think I would ask you. I think I think that would be a very bad uh, spy thing to do. Well, let me explain to all of you why I shouldn't keep it. Clearly, some uh, nefarious types and or law-abiding people might want to come for this mule converter. So I've decided, as I am not one to stick around in places, to absolve myself from this and just make a good amount of money selling it to you. Yeah, it makes sense. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have such a dangerous thing either. Oh, that's so dangerous and like, oh, kind of expensive. The bidding starts at 200,000 credits and immediately one of the Vesk throws up his hands and says 200,000 credits. Ooh, ooh, he must not have a wife or children at home. Right? Oof, bless, bless him. I hope he's got an army to protect that thing. Putting his life into mm -mm -mm. his hands. I the speed ray. Throws up his hands and says, 500,000 credits. Jeez Louise. Well, well, oh, I just hope, boy, I hope nobody puts a knife into his back. Is this doing nothing? Are we not intimidating these all people right, at all? All right, so, now that I've let you all, <laughs> said, said, let, let's hear some intimidates. <laughs> yes, oh, well, I don't, I'm not threatening them. I am going to threaten them. <laughs> I rolled a 12 plus 12 is 24. All right, let me roll there. Sense motive. So it seems that the Vesk backs down. But the speed ray was the last one to say a number. So he's just kind of sitting at 500,000. Is it time we bid, perhaps? Perhaps a 600,000. Is that a 600,000 I hear from the back? You're bidding? Laureline, we can't afford this thing. We can't afford the protection of it. Oh, you've already bid. Dang it. 750,000. Oh, no. I really should not have bought the I really should not have bought this painting, huh? <laughs> Am I a hey, question? Quick quick question. Oh, I'm keeping track of it. Um question. Am I allowed to leverage goods that I have bought in the auction? In my bead. <laughs> Laureline, we don't need this thing. Stop trying to ask this. No. I'm mm. so sorry. My wife is just... Oh. She's just trying to get us in trouble with the, the whole universe is going to be after this thing. She leans in close to you and quietly says, You like it. Make a bluff, Valerian. 17 plus 14 is 31. Ridiculous. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay, that, that, that beats him. The speed ray kind of looks side to side and sheepishly backs down. All right, Valerian. I think it's time for us to make one last big bid. 750,000 going once. 750,000 going twice. 800,000. Lord have mercy, woman! How much money y'all have left? Well, so my painting was 27,000, correct? Uh, and I, we also spent five on the Ziggly plate. 50. Mm, well, 50. Um, so that's not even 100,000. Mm -hmm. So we are we are still nearly 200,000 uh, away from running out of money with an 800,000 bid. Okay. The android looks at you up and down and goes, 900,000. We have 972,995 left, Valerian. Do we do this? Do we bet it all? I'm going to use every ounce of my, like, shivering will. Um, I don't know if you can spook an android, but... <laughs> <laughs> or no, it's an android. What was it? It's an android. Oh, it is the android. 
Wow, so he's just going all out, huh? He's got money to burn. Um, I'm going to say 900, 70 to 1,000, and I'm going to like count on my fingers and go, 995. No, 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 950. We, we spent 50, not 5, on the plate. Oh, 945, excuse me. No, no, 50, so 950. Well, I still... <laughs> yes, you're right, 950. <laughs> he is right. Okay. He is right. 970, we bought a, we bought a squiggly plate from... A vendor just down. If you take a if you take a right when you go out, uh, he's got some good plates. All right, nine hundred thirty-two thousand nine hundred nine hundred fifty. Is there anything y'all want to do to deter this guy from from bidding more than that? I want to glare menacingly. All right, give me a intimidation check. I'm also going to. Uh, I have some tools with me, and I, I'm just going to like take a wrench out and like wave it in the air a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nope. The android looks at you dead in the eyes, and then looks down at his feet and scuffs his toes a little bit. He's like, "Oh, dang it." <laughs> 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 I really wanted that little fat little pig guy. God <laughs> oh, dang it. Oh, man. Oh, shucks. Hey, I heard that. He's not a fat little pig. You I don't take know that what he back is. and apologize. I won't. I won't do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm real sad about it. You better be. <laughs> that large amount of numbers that I... That person over there said going once going twice sold to the two humans in the back what yay Whoa. look and we got the painting too. oh great thanks for spending all of our money woman on these dangerous horrible things let's go quick valerian 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 yes. oh you're still in i character. was in character I no i'm actually very excited. you're doing very Thank good you. you're doing good too but let's let's leave immediately let's grab our stuff let us go. leave Oh, I'm so sorry, husband, but you have such deep pockets and many, many gunships to protect us from <laughs> backstabbers. That's true. We will murderize anyone with our entire army. Let's go right now. Let's go right now. You go up to the front of the stage and Egon greets you and was like, Well, that was uh, quite a lot of bidding you did. Well, it was an auction. Yes. That wasn't French at all. Not, not even a little bit. Not even. That was not French at all. There, there we go. There you we go. It. We're back. You We're back on the, We're back, on the back on the French train. This is where you uh, pay up the piper, as it were. Pezzy man. Uh, Valeria. Yeah, here you go. All right, you fork over the money, and he takes it gladly, and he unlocks the cage. Come on, Dolly. We're free. These are your new owners of the moment. We're going to be best friends. And and the painting, please. My wife oh, really wants it. The, the painting, of course, here. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, bring the painting out here. Are you sure his name isn't Vel- Velkman? No, perhaps? his name's Jonathan. He's, uh, <laughs> he, 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 he was a, a foreign exchange student for a few years. Got a human name. Perhaps Stellantz or... V- Vedemore. <laughs> why, why do you have a problem with his name? I do, I do not actually. These are these are these are more Earth jokes. You should engage with the culture sometimes, right? <laughs> Valerian. Uh, okay. We have helmets that can impart this cultural knowledge to you in moments, and yet you you do not take advantage. Well, Jonathan comes over and he 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 hands you the uh, the, the small painting of Zevaroth the Impatient. That so it's just Se- it's Sephiroth, huh? Z- Zev- Zevaroth, <laughs> Zevaroth. Oh, with a Z. Me. Zev Zevaroth, yeah, it's different. No, he's wearing an all white cloak and he's got a large, <laughs> um, it's not it's not a nine foot katana. It's like it's like a three foot hammer, <laughs> but it's really wide. <laughs> no, it's not even wide. It's like paper thin. Oh, you might have okay. mis- you right. might have mistaked it for a sword, but it's actually a hammer. Okay, okay, mm. okay. But as you take the painting out of his hands, it seems he's holding a gun underneath. Oh, no, we did not, uh, no, no. The, I think the laser goes to, um, 
the, the big the big ones out there. The, yeah, we didn't we didn't order that. Egon laughs and you know the funny thing about auctions on a black market is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now that I've got your money. Yeah. And we got your guns outside. There's no reason for me not to take back what's mine. 